In this video, we are going to take a look at an introduction to JUnit 5. Now, we've been looking at JUnit in the test-driven development section of the course. We were using JUnit 5 there, but we only looked at a very little bit of its uh, capabilities. So we were just using it to run tests. Interestingly enough, Ken Beck, the author of the test-driven book, is also known as the creator of Extreme Programming, one of the original 17 signatures of Agile Manifesto. He also wrote, write only new, new code if an automated test has failed. So that's one of his famous quotes. Back in the 90s, I think you previously mentioned this, Beck wrote SUnit, a testing framework for small talk, and started using SUnit as a starting point. Beck partnered with Eric Gamma to write JUnit back in 1998. So it's been around for uh, quite some time. And interestingly enough, Gamma is one of the... Uh, original four, the gang of four. They wrote that iconic uh, book back in, I want to say 1994, if I remember right, uh, all about object-oriented design patterns. And if that book is not in your library, I highly recommend it. At least go out to my website. I have a whole series on the gang of four design patterns, something that I, I believe that every Java developer needs to know. JUnit has become the most popular Java library in history. Just give me an idea how popular it is. This is the top 20 libraries used in GitHub. And you can see JUnit is way up there at the top. So frequently used. This is mostly talking about JUnit 3 and 4. JUnit 5 has only been on the scene for roughly a year. But this is all, all JUnit, I'm assuming. And, but you can see roughly 65% of projects use JUnit. So highly popular, used. I see it all the time. It's become the de facto standard for testing. Now, JUnit 4, that was originally released back in February 2006. What's important to remember about that, it, it was based on Java 5. Java 6 was actually released after that, that. So we were uh, really beholden to a lot of the language features of Java 5 and 6. They've made uh, about 12 minor releases since 2006. Like I said, it's become the de facto standard for Java unit testing. It's just an absolute workhorse. But what happened was is a lot of language features have been added to Java. Java 8, 1.8 was a huge release for the Java community. A lot was added, a lot of functionality that we picked up, but JUnit 4 was not able to support that. So they decided to launch JUnit 5 and modernize the framework, so the fifth major release. Now it was originally called JUnit Lambda to take, care of, uh, take advantage of the Lambda expressions found in Java 8. Now they started a crowdfunding campaign. They raised 54,000 euro. Some of the corporate sponsors included Pivotal, the guys behind Spring, and American Express. And if you're not familiar with American Express, they are a huge financial institution. I think they're, I can't remember exactly, but they're like in the top three banks in the US. The first general available release of JNet 5 was on September 10th of 2017. And this is October of 2018, so roughly a year ago from the time I was recording this. Adoption's been a little little slow. JUnit 4 is just so established out there, but people are starting to use JUnit 5 more and more. Some of the goals of JUnit 5, obviously to leverage the features of Java 8, Lambda expression streams, and now they are putting a stake in the ground that Java 8 or higher is required. The Spring guys did exactly the same thing with uh, Spring 5, and they said Java 8 or higher is re required. They were tired of supporting these older Java versions. They've been deprecated a long time ago, so time to start getting people off these old JVMs. Another goal of JUnit 5 was to redesign it, and they really stepped back and looked at how can we integrate with other tools better, and how can we open up this platform to be extendable. Now, there's three major modules in this uh, JUnit platform. This is the foundation for launching test frameworks on the JVM. And this is what allows tests to be run from a console launcher or build tools such as Maven and Grail. Now there's also JUnit Jupyter. That is the programming model for writing the test and extension. So JUnit Jupyter is a lot of what we're going to be writing. So if you're providing a test annotation, that is going to be coming out of the JUnit Jupyter jar or libraries. And then there's JUnit Vintage, and this is a, a really nice thing that they provided. It's actually basically an adapter. I think of it as an adapter, at least. 
that allows you to take your existing JUnit 3 and 4 test if you have a large project, allow JUnit 5 to be the executor of those tests, and allow you to start implementing JUnit 5 tests. But JUnit Vintage is going to continue to run your JUnit 3 and 4 tests. So the Vintage module gives you uh, basically backward compatibility and a path forward. So if you have large legacy projects with a lot of tests, you don't have to convert everything over day one. You're able to convert over as you work through it. Now we'll look at the major annotations inside of JUnit. Obviously test, that's going to mark a test as a test method, just like JUnit 4. Parameterized test, we'll be looking at those. That allows your test to take in parameters. And then repeated test tells JUnit to repeat the test n number of times, a test factory, so a factory method for dynamic tests, and then a test instance. So that is used to configure the test instance lifecycle. And we'll be looking at the functionality of these, just making you aware of them right now. Test template, uh, so we can create uh, test templates. This is a nice feature. Uh, display name, this is uh, actually really nice. The Spot guys have had this forever, where you can get a human-friendly test name. Now we have an annotation inside of JUnit to do that. Before each, this is going to run before each individual test case. After each, as it implies, this is going to run after each individual test case. Now, before all, this needs to be a static method, and this method is going to run before all test cases in a class. So very important distinction. So the each methods will run before each test method. All will run before the whole class. Then, of course, we have after all, opposite of before all. We have a neat feature called nested test classes. This is, gives you, uh, opens up some pretty interesting capabilities within the JUnit framework, allowing you to create nested tests. Uh, tags, this is a new feature to JUnit 5. It allows you to declare tags and it allows you to set up filters on that. So when you're executing a test, like in from Gradle or Maven, you can specify a tag, a specific tag of your test that you want to execute on. And then disabled, and this will disable the execution of a test or a test class. So you can put it on individual test methods or the entire test class. And then extend with, and this is where you register third-party annotations, and we will be seeing several of those coming up in the class, specifically Makito. We'll be getting into Makito, and we can use an extend with, with Makito. And then Spring. So if we're going to be using uh, Spring, especially Spring Boot, we can use Extend With to create a Spring extension to give us all the Spring goodness inside of our tests. And we'll be seeing plenty of that coming up in the course as well. Now let's talk quickly about the JUnit test lifecycle. So when we run tests, what's going to happen is for that class, the before all annotation is going to run. So that's before everything else runs for that test class. And then for each test method before each is going to run, then obviously the individual test method will run, then after each will run, and then we go back, we kind of complete a loop there, we go over and over and over the number of test methods, so we'll be going before each test, after each, before each test, after each, until we've exhausted all the tests in that test class, and then after all will be executed. So important to keep this life cycle in mind, it gives you a lot of control, you can put things in these, and these methods are in the methods annotated with these for specific test functionality. And we will be looking at examples of those coming up in the course.